There, there, little guy. See, it's all right. There are some aftermarket companies that like you. Pioneer 500 owners have been waiting for a long, long time, well, pretty much since this machine came out, for the aftermarket to finally take notice and start giving us some more options as far as performance, suspension, things like that. And for the most part, unfortunately, our cries of despair and agony have gone unanswered. Finally, there is a small glimmer of light in the dark shadow that is the aftermarket support for your sport UTVs. Now don't get me wrong, the Pioneer 500 is a great little machine for getting out in the woods and just cruising around right straight from the factory. But if you've been watching my channel, the one thing I mentioned on my one year review of this guy is the harsh and bumpy ride the stock shocks provide. And this isn't just me being over picky. You ask any Pioneer 500 owner what their biggest complaint is, and you're likely to get one of two answers, if not both. First being the lack of a front locking differential, the second one being the suspension. And let's face it, these front stock shocks will be better used as weapons in the zombie apocalypse than to provide our pioneers with a soft, plush, cushiony ride in the woods. So as soon as I discovered that Walker Evans Racing had come out with a bolt-in remote reservoir shock for this little guy, well even if the zombie apocalypse would have happened, it would not have kept me from ordering a set of these for my Pioneer 500. Now these guys definitely look fancy in under here, but how do they perform? And more importantly, are they worth the amount of cash you gotta dish out in order to get a set of these? Well, I've come up with a series of tests that we're gonna use today to pit the Walker Evans in a side-by-side -side comparison against the stock shocks. And hopefully by the end of this comparison, you'll know whether or not these shocks are right for you. I know a lot of you have been anxiously and patiently waiting on me to get this review out there. So without further ado, gentlemen, start your testing. Now the first test we're gonna conduct is what I call the country whoops. Now I don't have access to any kind of circle track or anything like that. So we're gonna use the hay field behind me as a simulated whoop section. And this is more likely what you're defined or run onto out there in the woods or in your actual riding anyway. We're gonna do the stock shocks at both 10 miles an hour and 20 miles an hour. And then we're gonna compare that to the Walker Evans.
The next test I'm going to perform is what I call the Wee test, in which I'm going to hit this S turn at speed and compare how the shocks perform under high speed maneuvers. And cross your fingers that there is no soiling of my shorts occur due to almost tipping the Pioneer. The next test I'm going to perform is what I call the where did that come from test. And what this does is simulate the times you hit that unexpected ditch, bump, or washout and you don't have time to slow down to test the bottoming out resistance of our shocks. Because bottoming out your shocks is not only hard on your machine, it's also kind of hard on your back too. And the final test I'm going to perform is what I call the I believe I can fly test. I believe I can fly. I apologize for that. I don't know what came over me. It won't happen again. But did that bring back memories of watching Space Jam for anyone else or is that just me? Well, I'm going to launch the little Pioneer off the bank you see behind me and we'll see how the shocks hold up against the jump. Now I know a lot of you probably have no intention of jumping your Pioneer, so why even conduct this test? Well, it's fun! And come on, you can't tell me there hasn't been at least one time when you've been out riding with your Razors and your Can-Am, seeing them hit the jumps and think, hmm, I wonder...
So as was the case with each and every test I performed, the Walker Evans far exceeded my expectations in outperforming the stock shocks. Now, I didn't bore you guys with a bunch of trail riding because you really can't see much when you're kind of going slow through the woods, but trust me when I say these really shine in the woods. So the million dollar question, is it worth it just to buy the fronts? Well, you're going to have to wait till I get the backs on there and test before I answer that question. But I will say this, after having put the fronts on and leaving the back stock, I do notice the back wanting to hop, jump, and kind of slide out when I don't want it to more often. So once I get the backs on, I'm going to perform the tests again, see what kind of difference there is between having all four replaced between just the front, and then we'll be able to determine whether or not we can get by with just getting the fronts, or is it worth it to go ahead and get all four. If you haven't yet subscribed to my channel, make sure you do so. And make sure you click that notification bell there beside subscribe to make sure you never miss any future videos. And if this video has persuaded you one way or another or has helped you determine whether or not you're going to invest in Walker Evans shocks for your machine, make sure to click that like button and comment below. So I look forward to getting these rear guys on and getting back to my testing. I hope you stick around and tune in for that as well. So until then, remember, keep on riding. Take two. Quiet! Crank it! Bugs are awful! Ugh.